Okay, guys and girls, this is of course Nick Dutch back again for another music video. Uh, just to go over some of the things I mentioned before. Remember, of course, this is like my hobby. It's not something I take too seriously, but I do it for commercial reasons as well, okay? So I'm just typing in a title for the next bit of music I'm going to do. If you just like do some play about music scores, then it's good to save them on your hard drive so you can go back to them later and do a bit of copying and pasting. So here we go. We're going to do what I did before. Go down to keyboard, select piano, click add, click bass clef, and then remove. Okay, so we've only got the treble clef there for this one particular piece. Now I'm going to try and go a bit slower than what I did before because of course I've learned that there's a bit of a lag with this particular screen recording software that I'm using. Again, I'm going to do this in the, chord, in the scale of C major just out of convenience. I prefer to compose a lot more in D minor because it just sounds nice. Some people say it sounds sad or lugubrious. I just think D minor sounds really sweet, but today, just for convenience and for illustration purposes, I'm going to do C. Okay, for four, here we go. Um, should we do 12 bars? Well, just for the illustration, we'll just do 12. Okay, so we'll click finish and it creates the score. Hold down CTRL as before and mouse wheel forward. Okay, release CTRL, hold down left mouse button and drag the score across. Okay, there we go. Now essentially what I'm going to do is to describe chord progression as best as I can using my limited skills of speech. Firstly, just for a bit of information about terminology, these vertical lines here if you don't already know, are called bar lines, okay? And they demark or measure out a period of time. And this is 4-4 four, four time. So essentially that means there's four beats in a bar. There's four crotchets between each bar line. Important when you're composing so you work out the time duration of each note that you're putting on the whole thing. So as before, select the rest press the crotchet button which is the quarter note on the top left hand corner of the screen so we now have two or we should have two crotchet rests and one quaver rest well sorry not quaver um, what does musical call it again half note or minim that's the one and I'm going to click the crotchet button again so we now have four crotchet rests demonstrating we have four beats in a bar okay now Chord progression, 1-4-5 chord progression is important for composing. I used to know this guy uh, who was in a band, and the band played punk music, and he said no matter what style of music you're creating, you can't go wrong with 1-4-5 chord progression. Now let's have a quick look and see what it is. Click on the letter N on the top left hand corner, so I can start putting notes on the scale. Okay. Put one there, one there, one there, and one there. Okay, press notes, press N again to move out of note annotation. Right, now let's just see what these notes sound like all together. Quite a nice little chord that, but it is a chord because you've got more than one note being played at the same time. Uh, this is actually the chord of C. So the bottom note there is middle C, the next one there is E, the next one there is G, and the next one, is that right, C, D, E, yep that's right, C, E, G, and B. Now if you're doing 1-4-5 chord progression composing, this chord would be regarded as being the 1 of the 1-4-5 chord progression. Okay, now I'm going to put in another chord, and that's going to be the fourth, so you can see what that would sound like. So it's not on that, it's not on the middle C, it doesn't start on the middle C, because that will be the one. 
doesn't start on the D because that will be the 2 doesn't start on the E because that will be the 3 instead it starts on the F and we build up a chord just on one particular note which is the fourth by comparison with the middle C so we got one chord there which is on the number one and another one there which is on the number four press the N button again and let's hear that chord so you can hear what that sounds like another quite nice sounding chord All right but essentially if you're doing one four five chord progression within each bar you would have everything harmonious with just that one chord so let's say let's just zoom out a little and just imagine these one two three four bars okay just these four bars that you can front of you and let's say you were to do a four bar pattern within the first bar everything would have to be harmonious with chord number one which would be the C F A no I'm sorry C E G and B which is the first chord which I put in on the stave. Now let's say you do that one again for the second bar. Okay, all the notes you put into that bar are harmonic again with chord number one. Okay, so you'd have a one on the first bar, one on the second bar. Then on the third bar, let's say you did everything harmonious with the fourth, which is this one here. Okay. You would then have one, one, four. And then let's say the fourth bar, you could have uh, harmonious with the fifth chord. And the fifth chord would look like this. Okay, press um, letter N again. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, here we go. That's what that chord sounds like. So if you play all three chords from the beginning, Okay. Now, when you're composing uh, a 1 4 5 chord progression piece, you may want to choose, let's say, uh, a 12 bar piece just to start off with, like we've got on this score, and then have a pattern of four bars. And in each bar, you have a harmony with one of the chords, as I've already said. So you have 1 1 4 5 with the first four bars. Then the second four bars, you could repeat that pattern, or you could vary it, depending upon what you want the music uh, to sound like. And then on the third group of four bars, you could do the same. What you well, or, or you could have another combination of let's say five one one four or four four five one, depending upon what you're trying to create. Okay. So I'm going to erase now these notes okay so for me to have a uh, a bar on the first chord what could it sound like Let's in. okay and I'm going to change it a little so I'm going to select the rest and turn the rest into quavers just for the hell of it. Back to end for notation. Let's play the lot. Okay, now let's repeat that pattern again. Select the left hand note. Use the cursor keys whilst holding down shift to select all the notes of there. Go up, edit, copy. Select the next rest edit paste so we got the same one one on the first bar and the second bar now we're going to paste the next lot into the next sorry paste the same lot into the next bar but we're going to have that on the fourth so we can use the arrow keys OK, 
Okay, one, two, three. No, so it should be there, really. So the whole piece, if I've got it right, so far, will sound like this. And I'm going to paste the next bit in there for the same notes, okay, but I'm going to put them on the fifth. Okay, we got a problem because that one up there is a sharp, so I've just selected it, used the cursor keys, bring it down, okay? Now let's see how that sounds. Okay, that's good. It's just like that upper note just seems a little disharmonious somehow, so we'll just bring it down a bit, uh, so long as it's still in keeping with the harmony. Okay, and we'll go on to the next note there, and we'll uh, we'll lower that to that line, and then that one can go up there. Or actually, no, just just for the hell of it, we'll lower it even further, because if we're going to go back to the one again, um, namely the bar, sorry, um, chord one, it'll be good to have a downward progression to make it sound kind of like more appropriate and normal. So I'm going to put that in there. We're going to go one, uh, one five. Actually, we'll go straight up to the fifth. And I'm going to lower that note because it just didn't seem right before. So there we go. Uh, and as we're going to ascend to the fifth, we might as well have an upward progression. Okay, so we're just moving those two around a little. Paste the next one in, it's going to go up to the fifth. Whoops, what's happened there? Okay. Okay, uh, so how many bars have we done now? That's the seventh bar. <sighs> put in one more bar and we'll put that back on the first. Okay, so we now have eight bar composed. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, and you know, once you've got yourself a couple of patterns sorted out, you can adjust them any way that you see fit. But remember, it's still only based on the same three chords. The first, the fourth, and the fifth. Okay? The first being the one you start off on. The third being two notes above that. Sorry, the first being the one you start off on. The fourth being three notes above that. Okay, the chord transposed. And then the fifth being one above the fourth. Now, if you got that clear in your head, then basically you know what, what you need to do to basically create some basic music. And then you can just do all kinds of things like select a note maybe and and instead of it being what it was before, you can put a dot after it, so that will become a dotted crotchet, which will mean it will be one and a half crotchets for that one note. And that takes away one of the quavers, so it changes the rhythm and the meter just a little. Uh, let's say you want to do the same with that note there. I mean, this is just me playing about, okay, so it doesn't really matter too much. And who knows, it might come out sounding nice. I mean, it might not, it might sound appalling. Okay, uh, and that one there we can turn into quavers. What the hell? This is just me having fun. So put the notation in there. Put that there. 
Uh, okay, let's see what this sounds like, Matt. There you go. That's uh, eight bars composed using 145 chord progression. I uh, hope that makes some sense. Look after yourself. Speak to you again soon. God bless.